All right, so it's been a few hours. I've gone along the edges and checked to make sure everything was hardened up and it is in fact pretty solid. Pretty happy with how things have turned out. As you can imagine at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and loosen these braces up and let's get a better look at this with all the braces removed. All right, so the braces came off pretty good. The clamps, no issues there. So what are we gonna do next? You can see in the corners, we still need to fill in those where, where it was kind of hard to get to with the two by fours there. So we'll need to fill that in. And then we'll go along the various edges and we'll need to start sanding that down because what, what comes next is referred to as the tabbing. That's what essentially bonds the uh, Kevlar down to the base fiberglass. So we'll need to work on that. I'll probably go ahead and sand this gel coat back a little bit more as well. One thing to keep in mind during this process is you don't really have anywhere to drain the water out. So if you're going to use the hose after you make a mess sanding everything, because this is fiberglass here, you won't have a way to drain it. And even if you do decide to drill a hole there, you don't want to put water through that hole because it's exposed uh, marine grade wood in there. You want to put in the brass fitting and, and do this all up correctly um, before you opt to start running water through it. So you got to be kind of careful and meticulous as you're sanding because if you're not, you could end up with a mess in here and then not have a way of cleaning it. What you could do temporarily if you need is you can go through and actually sweep it up or use a shop vac as needed. So uh, consider that as, as an option, but like for example right here in this area there's a high spot. We'll need to grind this down a little bit and because there's cabasil mixed in here this is going to be even harder to grind than your basic fiberglass. So that's just how cabasil works. It, it makes it a little bit harder. Um, so yeah and we got some spots up here. So what I'll do next is I'll go ahead and suit up and start, you know, cleaning some of these edges off a little bit, grinding it down just a tad. Like, you know, there's some high spots here, a little bit here. Because, like I said, you're going to be putting your tabbing across. It's a six inch piece of tape. And if you've got a good bonding surface here, as soon as it hits one of these uh, humps, you're going to run into some issues. Or, if, like, there's a spot that's poking up right there. Yeah, you want to you wanna make sure you get all that, that flattened out a little bit. Same thing like around this corner up here. So run your hand across it at, after you're, um, you're done grinding and you'll be able to do a you know, go-no-go no go test. If it's smooth to your hand, then the tabbing will work out too. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and suit up. I'm going to go ahead and work on um, sanding these edges down, making them nice and smooth prepping this area for grinding. You can see here we have just completed the hopefully last of the grinding on it. If you've paid attention during the prior videos when I'm actually grand, uh, grounding down like 100% polyester resin fiberglass, you notice it's a lot more dirty. This is actually from having ground down the epoxy slash chop strand fiberglass. You can see it's a lot cleaner. Very interesting. I thought that was very, very interesting how there really wasn't that much excess junk, if you would, just flying around in the air, getting all over the place. This is a lot cleaner. So I guess maybe something to do with the newer chemical compounds, newer design of the uh, epoxy it's hard to say I don't know but I like it though I like you know it's not that dirty in here even after having ground down all those little corners and everything so I figured I'd mention that just in case you're wondering you know I wonder how dirty it got in there after you had to grind it again but yeah it actually didn't get that bad what you see is what you got I haven't cleaned up anything yet so check out this this is what I want to show you this is what what we're looking for it's a rubber glove right so it'll catch on stuff 
this is what you're looking for. If you can do this with your hand, that means the Kevlar, as you wrap it around the, for the tabbing, won't get stuck on anything. You want to do that throughout this entire phase of grinding. Because if it catches on something, your Kevlar will too, and it will have problems seating on a given corner or edge. So keep that in mind. What I'm going to do now, since we've made it this far, is I'm going to go take out the 6 inch Kevlar and get that ready. I'm also going to go ahead and clean up this area. If you're wondering what you're going to be using to clean it up with, you can use a shot back to kind of vacuum some of the excess uh, area off. And then what you want to do is use a uh, de-waxer because you use the grinding wheel, right? And the grinding wheel has wax coating on it. And you want to go ahead and try to get all that excess out so you get a good uh, adhesive stick or adhesive bond between the Kevlar um, and the resin, the epoxy resin too. So you want to make sure you can do everything you can to keep this area clean. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'll go ahead and clean this area up and we'll go ahead and get that six inch Kevlar tape ready to rock and roll. Okay, so when it went ahead and de-waxed everything real good. Just did a, another double check to make sure everything was pretty pretty well ready to go for the tabbing. So that corner I need to put a little bit. I'm going to mix just a real small amount of peanut butter in those corners. And then I'll go ahead and bring in some of the uh, tabbing. And we'll get started with that. So let's let's rock and roll with that piece of the project now. Alright, so one of the first things that I did was just to kind of even out the surface one last time. I mixed up some peanut butter, but I mixed up a little bit extra, not only to fill in those corner holes right there, but to kind of just paint a smooth edge because the consistency of peanut butter is real thick, right? So what I wanted to do is kind of just plane out any kind of surfaces that were kind of uneven and prepare it for the tabbing. It doesn't hurt at all to add a little bit of peanut butter underneath the uh, tabbing, the Kevlar tabbing. It's not going to hurt it one bit. So I went ahead and did that, smoothed it out. And that is pretty much it for this uh, part of the uh, peanut butter mix. So what we're going to do now is just switch over to traditional uh, Kevlar and epoxy. And then we'll start working on the tabbing piece. I'll most likely work um, probably one of the easier sections like in the corner. And we'll just do straight lines and then we'll come back and do the, the actual rounded pieces. So let's go ahead and kick that off. What do you think so far? Pretty good? This Kevlar and epoxy mix is just absolutely fantastic. Nothing but good things to say. You can put multiple layers. It allows you to take all the bubbles out like with super, super amounts of ease. So, you know, the easier a project is to complete, the better I like it, you know. And I've got all the confidence in the world with this Kevlar. So I'm super excited. I like the way it's it's laid out. The epoxy absorbs well inside the Kevlar. So getting bubbles out in a orderly manner, super easy. So I'm going to go ahead and keep moving, uh, moving along, trucking along here. We'll go ahead and get all this Kevlar added. But like I said, if, if you're still on the fence about, you know, using Kevlar versus 1708, give Kevlar a chance. I know it's about five times more expensive, but you'll really like the, uh, the way it lays. And it's, uh, I'm pretty sure the results are going to be twice as strong. So I'll go ahead and continue up here and stay tuned as I continue up with this uh, tapping process. Okay, progressing right along. You'll see some of the edges, I've actually doubled them up. Anywhere where I had the cut to adjust for an angle, I went afterwards and put a little uh, piece of Kevlar to cover that seam up, just to make sure there was no exposed seams at all. So everything has been doubled up along the edges. Come along quite well. We are just about done along this corner. We'll finish up the top and we will be done. So let's continue. And there it is. Tabbing is complete across the entire transom. Looks pretty good. Like I said, the Kevlar and 635 epoxy is a perfect combination. Super easy to lay out. 
tabbing uh, is easy to handle it's not itchy so many good reasons to use Kevlar over epoxy makes less mess if you if you have to grind it up that's one thing I noticed with the epoxy when I was kind of shaving up the edges I got a um, a statement earlier in my past video about whether or not I'm going to do anything with this and you'll see I left it I left it bare uh, the reason I, I did that is that's kind of done on purpose I will um, sand this down I'm going to drill the holes make sure the uh, transom will fit through and everything like it's supposed to and then I'll go ahead and coat this uh, with Kevlar as well so this will be all done I, I didn't I left this um, bare for right now for a reason so anyway that is that looking pretty good and yeah it's finally getting dark around here so we'll probably go ahead and conclude this video nothing crazy I've got another video of here curious on how to do the same process only with uh, 1708 fiberglass and polyester resin similar process it's just as you can imagine I like Kevlar and epoxy so much better I'll probably say it a million more times before everything is said and done here so if you're not a subscriber of my channel hit that subscribe button it's basically a it's a picture of myself inside of a boat so you just smash that button that will uh, subscribe to my channel. This way you'll see all of the videos I'm posting. Like the video if you thought it was helpful. It kind of helps me engage whether or not I'm doing a good job or not. If you got questions or comments or you're like, hey, I'd like to see you try this, throw some comments in the comments below. I typically get to them in about a day or two, maybe longer depending on how uh, busy I am. But yeah, let me know how, how things are going for you. And as always, we'll catch you on the next episode. Have a good one.